program to compensate survivors of state-sponsored sterilizations is soon coming to a close. In this first in a series of stories, I Eyewitness News reporter Annabelle Munoz tells us more about why the program was created and speaks with a survivor who is now helping find others who may qualify for compensation. Moonlight Pulido spent 26 years in prison. I used to watch the hawks outside my window and um, they would come every day and they would sit outside and it was uh, breathtaking because they were free and I wanted to be free and just fly just like them. When she got her freedom in early 2022, she returned to this Harbor City Park, a place where she used to ride a bike and pedal boats as a child. It's quiet. I don't hear the gunshots. It's just peaceful. Pulido says while she was incarcerated, she witnessed things most people can't imagine. And she lived some of them, too. She recalls getting a routine pap smear in 2005. She says that's when she was told she had two growths that could turn into cancer. So I thought I was signing up for a life-saving procedure. Instead, she describes feeling rushed to sign paperwork just before the procedure. After days of feeling like something was wrong, she asked a nurse which procedure she underwent. She looks at me very nonchalantly. She goes, you had a full hysterectomy. And I was like, whoa, wait a minute. I think you're looking at the wrong paperwork. The Center for Investigative Reporting found at least 132 women were sterilized through tubal ligations without the necessary approval in California prisons between 2006 and 2010, and possibly 100 more dating back to the late 90s. Advocates stress others were sterilized by different procedures. Polido recalls the doctor's response when she questioned him. I'm not going to use verbatim what he said because I don't think I can say this on TV, but he said, I'm tired of you pretty native girls, you pretty Mexican girls, and you pretty African American girls. You guys come up in here and you get all hot and bothered. Then you go home and you do the wild thing. You get pregnant again. You come back to prison. Your children end up out there in foster care or wherever they end up. And us taxpayers are forced to have to pay to take care of your children. My mouth at the floor. In 2021, the California state legislature and Governor Gavin Newsom approved the forced or involuntary sterilization compensation program as part of the budget. Pulido was one of the survivors who was compensated. I went in my room and locked the door and sat on the floor and just kind of fanned the money out on the floor. And I just sat there and I was crying looking at it because it was the most money I had ever had legally. It's, it was kind of like a bittersweet. So this is acknowledgement that, yeah, something was done to us. It'll never be able to replace what was taken from us. Two groups of survivors of forced or involuntary sterilizations are eligible. People sterilized under California's eugenics laws until 1979. And those sterilized in California state prisons or other correctional facilities after 1979 while in CDCR custody. This man stole that gift from me because he didn't ask me. He never even gave me an inclination that he was going to do anything remotely close to that. And so I felt robbed. I felt like I had been tied up and stolen from. Today, she works to help people transition into life outside of incarceration. She says the compensation she received helped her get acclimated back into society. You don't realize how much it costs to, to, to start living all over again, you know. Pulido also teamed up with the California Coalition for Women Prisoners to help find more survivors. There's so many people still inside that don't even know that the governor had signed um, a reparations bill. Since the program opened in 2022, Pulido and other survivors and advocates have raised concerns over some of the denials issued. Women who, for example, say they can no longer give birth due to a procedure they underwent in prison without their proper consent, but who the state agency administering the program determined did not undergo a sterilization. Why not? They still can't give life. They were still sterilized, just in a different, in a different way. Some are continuing to appeal those decisions right now. I'm hurt and upset because they have a heavier weight to carry. Annabelle Munoz, ABC7 Eyewitness News.
And the last day to send in an application for compensation is December 31st. Tomorrow we take a closer look at the experience of one woman who continues to argue that she was sterilized while in prison without her consent. Hello, I'm Mark Brown. Get more great ABC7 content by clicking the subscribe button for our YouTube channel and download the ABC7 Los Angeles streaming app on Fire TV, Android TV, Apple TV and Roku to watch on your TV.